Hi there, it's Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California, and I uh, just want to welcome you. And this is really a video tutorial for uh, the attendees of my workshop. I'm trying to put a, a group of videos together which are going to just get you um, a little more, even more familiar with my 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 techniques and my methods and how I do things. So when you get to these workshops, you're going to be all ready to go and we can spend the time on the important stuff like learning and not so much time on the technical stuff. So you hopefully will be seeing this a month or two before your workshop and you'll be able to um, work with it. You'll be able to look at other videos and I'll keep coming out with videos that are really going to be geared to help the transition, help you when you get to this workshop, you're going to be ready to go. So sit back. I'm going to take you on today a, a simple little uh, shoot I did. This was a 3,500 3, square foot house. It's like my bread and butter, what I do. New agent for me today. And uh, I'm just going to go over the images uh, from the beginning and show you what I shot and uh, tell you uh, why I'm doing some of the things I'm doing. I'm going to try and make it very quick because I don't want to drag this out. But I'm going to try and just tell you what shots, why I'm choosing this angle and how to edit it and to look at what I'm doing to my um, ambient shot, what I'm doing to my flash shot, a window shot if I need to, and just take you through the process. And I think you can really get a good idea. The great thing about the workshop is we're going to be able to really, you're going to see me hands on physically where I put my lights, how I do my stuff. And it's all going to be hopefully a um, aha moment or a light bulb moment. So just going to put together, uh, take away that disconnect from the videos to reality. So look forward to meeting y'all and uh, please feel free to send your comments, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, but I have a pretty good feeling you do have already subscribed to it. Please, if you want, use my Adorama link, which will be in the show notes because that helps me put on these free videos. Um, and I, I want to thank you for entrusting me in your workshop education. Uh, means a lot to me. We're going to be dealing with everyday, everyday real estate and how to um, really be able to leave the workshop from two days and then go Monday. You'll be able to go to a house, a lower end house, any house, and be able to use these techniques right away. It's not going to be save them for really special things, although you can. But really, my emphasis is on basic understanding the concepts, what parts we need to get to be successful and shoot faster, shoot better, spend more time with our family, blah, blah, blah. You know how that goes. Anyway, sit back and I'll be here uh, with you in a second and we'll just start going through the images I shot and how I'm editing them. Talk to you later. Hey, well, here's the house I shot. And, uh, you know, I, I really want to impress that this is this workshop is for people that are looking to shoot this house. This is not a luxury uh, home, I would call in any way, but it is it is 75% uh, of the, the work that I do in real estate photography. Now, I walk up to a house, and the, what I did was I looked at this, and I even shot it, but the, the sun's in the wrong place, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to shoot the exterior uh, when I get back. So I'm coming in the house, and the first thing I do is plop my equipment right at the front door, which is just to the left over here, and uh, I just get started shooting. I uh, don't, I don't really shoot in any spe specific order. I kind of shoot what's next to me, and I think that if you uh, can save a minute here, a second there, you're going to save time. So first shot I've got. Now, by the way, I imported everything and used my full bump. Um, I think I'm going to call it my full metal bump. No, but it's called my full bump or my special sauce. I have videos for it. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit a preset called Ambient Yellow Out because it's got a little bit of yellow in here. And this ambient shot, I don't really um, want that much color in there. And I'm not going to use that much of it. So I'm just going to put Ambient Yellow Out there. And it actually changes. So let's go back. Here's my full bump. And you see I've pushed the shadows, pushed the highlights in different directions. And when I do my full, when I do my ambient out, I'm also taking out some of the yellow slider. So let's do it and I'll show you. So just ambient yellow out. And you can see right here in the saturation slider, I've changed these. I'm taking some of the blue out, some yellow, some orange. And these are in the HSL sliders in Lightroom. 
Okay, so really simply, you can see the difference between my um, with the yellow and without the yellow. And this looks like kind of a crappy photo, but it will be just fine for the ambient I need. Okay, so now I'm going to my flash shot. And you can see for this shot, actually, I had one shot and I changed the composition a little bit. So I wanted to designate that I'm starting a new set of photos so I didn't get, I, I didn't, wouldn't have any problem remembering what it was. I put my hand in front of the mirror, in front of the uh, mirrorless camera, my Sony a6000, and I put my hand there and now I know I'm starting right here. So this ambient shot is 1 400th, I'm sorry, ISO 400, it's um, f7.1 and 1 6th of a second. And... As you can see here from my histogram, it's a little overexposed, but I'm fine with it. I'm gonna, it's gonna be perfect for what I want to use it for. Let's go over here to the flash image. Uh, flash image is over here. So basically, I took one uh, 360 speed light, uh, not speed light, the, the streak light 360, uh, flash point 360, and I just pointed it right at the ceiling. And it did pretty well. I have a little bit of a shadow here. I have the full bump on this image, but it's just, I could probably deliver this image. You know, it looks a little flashy. So I'm just gonna, gonna go put one star next to it. And this one is ISO 200, because I wanted to save myself. I didn't want to have to do a window pull. So I just exposed for the window and I dropped my ISO down to 200, uh, uh, 200 ISO. And I shot at my, my max sync speed, which is 200 of, of a second, and I'm still at f7.1, and I got a great exposure. So I got no problems here. I'm just going to highlight both of these. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And while I've got you here, I'm going to take a little sip of soda. And while this is coming in into Photoshop, the first image is always a little slower. I just want to say, man... Be sure to subscribe to the channel, use my YouTube link, uh, my Adorama link, and then uh, if you want more information on the workshops, you can absolutely send me an email to rich at richbaum.com. Talk to you when we, uh, when we converse. I love talking by phone. Anyway, I'm going to highlight both of these, and I'm going to hit Command-1, and that is set up to do the auto alignment in layers. I used to not do auto alignment and I just started doing it the latter part of last year. Okay, so now I've got my ambient on shot on top. I have got my add a new layer mask. I'm only gonna say this one time. I'm just gonna do it the same way every shot. So I'm holding down option on a Mac, alt on a PC and add a layer mask. And there we go. The flash shot is above. I'm gonna turn it to white. I'm gonna hit X here, over here in the paintbrush, put X and I want to be white for painting, 6% flow, I'm at 0% hardness, and again, I'm not going to say this, this procedure anymore because I always do it the same way, at least for this shoot. So I've got my mask up here, what I want to do now is mask in the ambient. So I'm just going to open this up a little bit, bring a little bit of ambient in here, chill that out little bit under here and this will show you how fast and easy it is and I think yes it does make a big enough difference to want to use the flambient method uh, someone said a new one I'm actually gonna go back here and erase a little bit of that they called it the flamboyant method but I don't think I'll be using that there we go I'm set with that so I hit command SW bring it back in Lightroom and I'm not even going to uh, touch it in Lightroom, okay? So here's the shot I did for the delivery right here. And my delivery shot is, oh, I know what happened. I had a little extra uh, double bump here. So let's go reset. Here we go. And that's the original one I was going to send to my client. And there's the edited one. They're pretty identical. So anyway, so let me just continue on. And then right behind me here was the stairway. So I wanted to get that, um, that stairway shot. So what I want to do is go with my ambient shot. And you can see here, and it's a little overexposed in the histogram, but I've got pretty good stuff here. I'm going to go get the yellow out, ambient yellow out, that new preset I've been using. 
and it brings it back to a little bit better color for, let's say, the flash shot I'm going to use down here. And this is good. I have a flash behind this wall pointing straight at the ceiling. You can see little remnants of the spillover in here, but it's going to give a little bit of flash to this area. And then I put a flash on the other side of this wall, so I have a little bit of flash uh, light coming through here, and I've kind of exposed for the window. Upstairs is going to be all ambient. I didn't. I put a streak light right next to my camera, bouncing off the ceiling here. So I'm using three lights: one 360 by my camera here, one uh, 200 over here, pointing up in here, and I actually have a, a speed light here, and then I have the 200 up in here. So let's just take this and the the settings for this is ISO 320. I changed it a little bit. Um, 1 80th of a second at f7.1. Everything will be from now on 320th of a second, 1 80th of a second for shutter speed for the flash. Okay, but that will change per, excuse me, per image. So I've got a good shot here and I've got an ambient shot. My ambient shot is 1 5th of a second. So I'm going to highlight them both, edit in layers of Photoshop. Have a little, I'm eating some nuts right now and enjoying myself while I'm editing. Mm. I'm going to get a little more RAM this year. I might get a faster computer because that five seconds I wait for each image to come in, that adds up. So at least make sure you've got a solid state hard drive. Okay, let's do uh, align the layers. Again, I'm not going to go through this if you really want to know. Uh, just go through the video again. Okay, bringing the flash shot on top, and I'm set. I want to do over here, white for paint. I'm going to keep all the same settings. Let's just go here, a little bit of ambient in here, a little bit of ambient up there, a little bit here. Get rid of that, that um, flashiness. And again, look at over in that room. You can see it's got a little bit flash there, so I'm putting this in. Looks good to me, and then I am done. I got a little bit of sun up here, so what I did is I'm going to do Command F and flatten this. I could do that other ways too. I'm just going to take my patch tool. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to move it over to here. And there I go. Deselect, and there you go. Okay, Command S W, bring it back into Lightroom. Okay, so this is good. I've got this one, and um, that's the other one I deliver, or I'm going to deliver. So let's go here with this shot. I'm just doing, see, I'm doing an overall shot here, and then I'm moving into this room, and all I do is deliver one shot here. So let's do the ambient shot. I'm going to do get the yellow out again, and don't worry, I'll do a video on the yellow, get the yellow out uh, preset. But you see, it took down the yellow. And it's a general, it's a general setting that gets me in the ballpark. So I love it. Okay, and the flash shot here is going to be perfect. So I did one single speed light, not speed light. Uh, I think I did my my 200 or my streak light pointing straight up above me by camera, and it's um, 180th of a second, 320, same as the last shot. So let's just put it here. Bam, edit in. Open his layers in Photoshop. And the next um, eh, then couple of photos, I'll just show you how absolutely quick and easy this whole thing is. We're literally talking a minute or two per image. Not much more time shooting. The quality, um, the true colors, I think is, is far worth the extra amount of effort and time. And you can see with the, um, with the um, get the yellow out, I'm not really having to change that much, you know? This is a little less yellow than I, no, this is a little less yellow than I'd probably want, but it'll be fine for this anyway. Let's just uh, now layer mask and I am ready to go. Paintbrush and I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow there, a little bit of ambient on the wall, ambient there, ambient for that lamp underneath the couch a little bit. And you might find some issues, but we're not going to worry about that. This is quick, down and dirty. Apologize for the uh, phone call. 
lately with all my podcasts and everything, I've been uh, getting a lot of calls during during recording. Okay, Command SW, bring it back into Lightroom. Okay, and there we go. Now I'm going to do a bathroom. I have the ambient shot for the bathroom, and I did a vertical just because I'm going to put it together with another shot vertical and make it two shots next to each other. So I'm just going to go here and get the ambient yellow out. It's still a little yellow because here's the flash layer I'm going to do. So what I want to do is now use my eyedropper tool, go into the sink. I find sinks are pretty good to go in, white sinks. And there we go. And let's look at the two next to each other. That's pretty darn good. So the main thing I'm only going to really use it for is this mirror back here. Okay. Um, so let's go edit in. There's in Photoshop. And I hope everybody's having a great, great winter. Are you back east? I feel sorry for you. Because today, it is just beautiful out today in California. And it's about 55 degrees, 60 degrees. I went skiing the other day. Great time on my new skis. And uh, no blizzards, no problems. So anyway, I'm not even going to align these layers. I'm just going to do a quick right in there. The mirror. There we go. Little bit of uh, shadow right here. A little bit in here. Okay. There we go. Done. And I don't think uh, anybody has a complaint about how fast that is. I will say, though, the faster, the better you are lighting, the faster your editing will go. Okay. Here I had a trouble with, I had to do a lot of shots to get this right. I'll just go through them with you. I did an ambient shot, eh, a little bit too bright. Here's the ambient shot I'm using. Here is another uh, flash shot I, I screwed up, a flash shot I screwed up, a flash shot I'm finding it's way too much power, uh, another flash shot, uh, not enough power, I screwed it up again. Just playing around, finding the right flash shot, and the last one I did right here is the flash shot I'm going with. And that is one one sixtieth of a second, and very important, especially for everybody in my workshops, it's important for, a, especially like a bathroom, you want to overexpose, you want to properly expose the thing that's the lightest in the room. And for these bathroom shots, it's usually these fixtures. I could have probably gone a little darker, like, um, like there, okay? But I'm just going to take this shot, is good. I'm going to take my ambient. So that is um, 1 1 60th, and my ambient is 1 8th. So let's try, uh, put them together. And let's, oh, you know, one thing I did, okay, here's a great example. This ambient shot, I just want to lighten this up a little bit. So I'm just taking my local uh, adjustment and I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. I'm going to raise my flow up to about 80% and then just bring it there. And then I'm going to hit option and erase there. But it's pretty good. Okay, really quick. Let's just edit this. Okay, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, mother says me, 10, mother says me. Okay, if it takes longer than 10 seconds for YouTube images to open up, like mine are taking 12 or 13 seconds, I think it's time to get a new computer or to uh, speed your computer up with a solid state. It used to take me a minute for every time I have to send an image to Photoshop. And I'll tell you, my wife was the one that said, you go, you got to be kidding me. Take our money and spend it on a new computer. And I did not say no. Okay, so I've got the ambient here masking in right there. See how easy that is? That's letting the ambient do the heavy lifting. And then in this window back here, the mirror, I'm going to just mask in the ambient. Okay, and blah, 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 there we go. So that wasn't very hard. And the main thing too in the, these workshops, I'm gonna have you identify, I'm gonna teach you how to identify all of the pieces to the puzzle. I mean, this is basically just one puzzle after another. So, okay, let's go here, keep on with this. And I'm gonna show you, you know, I'm, I'm editing this house and I could do it really quick in about 20 minutes. Uh, I think I could do on average about one minute per image and I could probably use some of these like this one absolutely I can use straight at a camera 
actually let me uh, reset straight out of camera right there so what I'm gonna do is go again and add the um, my full bump here give me a little bit here and uh, the only thing is I've got a little bit of shadow from the ceiling fan there so I'm going to now pick my ambient shot open his layers in Photoshop and again here I lowered my ISO to 160 because I couldn't over I couldn't properly expose this window view so a lot of you can just get by with one shot if you if you had your if you had your game on no problem okay so now I'm just going to make a layer mask and I'm going to set everything to set I'm just gonna mellow out that shadow under the bed right here right there let me just open this up in here okay it's just adding a little life to the image I kind of like it got rid of that ceiling fan shadow with the ambient a little more there actually that ambient spoiled over into the flash I want to keep that flash there that's why it's so important even if you're using ambient to mask in you really want to make sure that your flash shot is as good as possible okay so I'm gonna hit X here and I'm gonna paint a little more ambient back in here there we go there we go okay done deal not too long I mean I'm not gonna really say that again I'm just letting you know that this is so fast and so easy okay so now I've got a, a little bit of a tricky room let's see I did one two three four five six shots before I got everything perfect so I'm gonna go here for the ambient shot and this is gonna work good I think let me see this one a little darker you know I think I'll use this one okay I'm gonna use my ambient yellow out that's why because the ambient shots being dictated by all of these color casts on the tungsten lights so I'm just gonna do ambient yellow out okay and now I'm going to just do a little bit of exposure you can see my histogram right up here is right in the middle so I'll go with that that's pretty good and I'm gonna try a white balance I may not change my white balance I'm just gonna find something a little off-white oh there we go with the phone so bear with me okay so that looks good now I'm gonna take out a little more of my blue because when you take out the, the orange or you do a, a white balance eyedropper many times it's replaced with too much blue so I've got the uh, that shot there I'm putting a one star next to it and then I'm gonna go to the end of that sequence again I apologize for the phone call okay end of the sequence right here and I've got a very flashy shot so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna lower down I've got the full bump there just lower it down about there okay but I got some issues here I got the flash reflection here and I want to make sure I'm gonna highlight my ambient and my flash and let's look at this picture yeah I can use I'm gonna actually increase it a little bit a little brighter I can use this image to mask out this ceiling fan this uh, flash uh, light I have a little bit of darkness in here but I've got a good exposure there so let's just put this together I'm also gonna put a one star there and I'm going to edit in and this is where I left off before I edited a bunch of the photos before I edited already so I'm bringing you from scratch and I'm gonna show you uh, all the all the images that we did okay give you a good idea of what a full shoot with me sounds like looks like okay so I am highlighting both the layers I'm going command one is auto align I don't know if it's auto align on every computer it's auto align on mine highlight the ambient make a layer mask everything's good I'm gonna open this up okay let's start dealing with the window first you know what I don't like the colors here so I'm gonna go into luminosity mode there we go yeah look at how nice that is let's go in here a little bit ambient in here good let's get rid of that shine and the you can use the ambient for a lot of things look at a shine in these couches you just do it to taste you don't need much let's get rid of that uh, that shadow from my light a little bit of ambient in here a little bit over there there we go and all I'm doing is when I'm shooting I'm identifying what I'm gonna need I'm gonna go backwards on here there for that light okay and I am pretty happy so this is before and look in here look in this hallway 
not hallway, but this uh, window side. Look at the flash here. Look at in general. And let's see what adding that little bit of ambient does. Okay. I think you'll agree with me. And even if you don't agree with me, I'm going to stay with what my gut tells me. And this is the best, best method, I think. Um, let's go to the next shot. I'm going to now put a three here. Okay. Let's go to the next shot. I go to the last one. And I'm going to do this one for the flash. Bring it down a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to, oops, a little more. There we go. I want to now um, take out the blue. I've got too much sunlight coming in there. So let's take out that blue. Great. And that's the flash shot. You notice I don't have any light in there. And basically what I'm going to do is to let the ambient do the heavy lifting. I'm going to get rid of that yellow. Bam. Who remembers Emerald, man? He was the greatest TV show. Bam! And uh, he's not on the air anymore. Oh, boy. Getting calls. back. Okay, and now we're going to edit in layers in Photoshop. I'm just going to start ripping through these things because my main thing is just to show you the workflow, trying to get you to start thinking about it. And you have plenty of time. We have almost two months um, for this. Uh, we have a month and a half before this first workshop in February 28th. So I uh, really encourage you to get a hold of me and we can go over your equipment we can go over uh, techniques, any questions you have, because I want you up to speed when we get together for the actual workshop, okay? Bam, let's just do this here. The main thing, I usually gotta make it white paint. There you go. If that's not the simplest and easiest way, you know, trying to light a hallway like that can, yeah, it's, it's gonna look better if you, oh, I moved the chair. Ooh, that's okay. I can totally, uh, that's, I'm not even going to go into that story. I moved the chair, so I'm just going to completely mask in uh, the chair from the new position. Okay, let's just do a little bit of light in here. Right, there we go. Get rid of the shadows under the chair, a little bit of ambient in there. Bam. Good. And honestly, I'm, I'm going to bring this back a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, that chair, I moved it. So the way you can get around that is just totally mask in your second shot. Okay. There we go. Put a three next to that. Let me go to my last shot. I always go to the last shot in the sequence. And that's usually the flash shot that I want to use. So I'm going to bring down the exposure here. Main thing is going to be for this ceiling fan shadow. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to add in, I don't need to do the yellow out. I'm just going to add in a little bit of dehaze because it helps with this. Um, you can see before I used it, like the, one second. The, it's hazy here because of the window, the light streaming in hitting my lens. It's one thing about the Samyang 12. It uh, does deal with uh, haze and it, you got a little bit of haze issues. So let's just go here, add it in, have a sip of soda. Stoked about the workshop and where I'm having it. And 
will be coming to, Sa to Seattle in the end of May, end of April, beginning of May, for at least two workshops. So I'm really excited to be taking the Rich Bomb Trips Tick Tips and Tricks Workshop Tour 2018. I'm actually going to take it on the road, so that's going to be really, really um, challenging, but fun. Okay, I'm 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 editing slow because I'm talking, I'm thinking, so it's not this slow. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, and I'm just going to take this out for the. Oh, I got to go back to paint. With make sure my paintbrush is white. I'm just gonna go and erase that ceiling fan shadow. Okay. Now let me go. It's not perfect. None of this stuff I do is perfect. Now look at luminosity there. A little better. Okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of ambient there, a little bit there, a little there. Okay. And as you can see from my shots, hopefully you'll get a, an idea of my flow and how I'm how I'm shooting, what I want to see. This is all shot with a Sony A6000. I think I paid $375 for it, open box at Best Buy. And then I have uh, the Samyang 12 millimeter. Okay, I'm just gonna crop this a little bit to get rid of that part of the wall. I see a little bit of the wall there. Okay, that looks good. And uh, I got a little cables here, but nah. Excuse my language, screw it, okay. Uh, let's do the flash shot here. That looks really good. And basically, again, I'm going to start kind of refresh you with what I'm shooting. I've got one Streaklight 360 pointed straight up. I am using ISO 160 so I can get a good exposure out here. I am having one two hundredth of a second. My ambient shot here. That's a little bright. I think I did a little. Nope, that's the ambient shot I got. Okay, so let's do a get the orange out. There we go. Now let's do some dehaze because ambient shots sometimes have a little too much haze. Okay, eh, I'm not crazy about this ambient shot, but it's all I got. Okay, I'm going to edit in. And who has been having, I want people to reply in the group, the Facebook. Oh, by the way, if you're not in the workshop, any of you are thinking about it, we have a private Facebook group just for the attendees and we we discuss all the things about you people behind your back that aren't members. No, no, no. We do it because people can contact each other, talk with each other, and um, can really uh, set things up and answer. I can answer questions for people, um, especially before you come. So, whoops, nope, let me go over here. I'm screwing up because I'm I'm screwing up because I am talking too much. Okay, so I'm just going to stop talking too much. Bring a little bit of ambient in here, a little bit in here. There we go. And you'll see I have the ceiling fan light off in here. I don't know, it was off and I realized it and I said, ah, screw it, I'm just going to shoot it off. So I, uh, I don't mind shooting sometimes with the lights on, lights off. Um, lights off is much better problemat problematically because you won't in influence the color temperature with your um, with your room lights, the tungsten room lights. So I'm just going to crop this back to here. There we go. I like keeping in the ceiling fan because it shows um, a part of the house that almost always goes with the sale of the house. Let's do another room. Okay. Uh, that's going to be nice right there. I could deliver this shot, no problem. And, uh, you know, I actually think I will. So I'm just going to put a three by that. All I did was add a little bit of full bump. It's not perfect, but uh, it'll certainly do. And here's another shoot, another shot. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to use a little bit of ambient in there because, I'm going to get the yellow out, uh, just because I want it to... Uh, and if you notice too, when I do the get the yellow out, I drop my shadows down too. So I will do a uh, another video on the special sauce and on the, um, I have different names for it. I call it ambient yellow out. So it's a general fix because when I import my images, I import them with the full bump, even the ambient shots. And sometimes I just like the ambient shot to not have any uh, orange in it or uh, 
or any of the, the preset that I get when I do my full bump. I hope I'm not, um, I'm hope I'm keeping everybody together. Okay, I hope this is making sense and I'm not going too fast for you. I'm not telling you all the settings again. So let's see. The uh, here, let's go back to here. The ambient shot is one fifth of a second at one sixtieth. One, I'm sorry, 160 ISO. The flash shot is um, 160 ISO, one two hundredth of a second. I wanted to get that window view, so I had to drop my ambient down. I mean my uh, ISO down. So, so basically, I'm just going to now bring in a little bit of ambient here under there. Just take the light away from on camera, the camera direction light. And that pretty much does it. I don't need much. A lot of people might look at that TV and go, Ooh, I got to put something on the TV. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just don't have the time for it today. If you want to, I think you should put a TV screen in there. You can do the outside of the house. You can do your own logo, whatever you want. But I don't do much of that anymore. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel on how to do that. Okay, let's go really quick into the bathroom. And here is the flash shot. Bring that here. And boy, I'm going to leave that. A little bit flashy over here, but you know what? I think it looks fine. Okay, so I'm just going to use that straight out of camera. I don't do that that often. Not straight out of camera, but I'm not uh, not really bringing it in Photoshop for anything. Okay, I've got to use the ambient here to get rid of my reflection in the mirror. But I exposed it for these lights and the window um, at 160th of a second ISO 250. And here is the ambient shot, which I'm going to look at the second ambient shot I did. Nope, that was flash too. So I only did one ambient shot. And I might recommend do three or four ambient shots. Bracket them so you have what you need. But I'm mainly using it for right here. So I've made it look pretty good there. You know, one thing I need to do is to take out the uh, yellow from this. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the ambient for the reverse of that mirror. Okay. And don't worry, we'll be going through bathrooms. We got some really cool bathrooms in the house we're shooting. And um, we're just going to go through everything you need. And please remember, write questions down. So if you're wondering something, we can get it out of the way beforehand. And when you get to the workshop, we'll know what you want to work on because you will have written down your questions. You can even send them to me beforehand. So that wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, let's go here and let's just mask out the flash shot. I'm putting the ambient back in there. I'm going to bring a little ambient in here. There you go. Bring up these lights a little bit. And here you go. Okay. And in bathrooms, I don't really want to make a super view there because it gets a little, little touchy. I might not have even wanted to view it all there because they don't want people to think that they're, um, they're having people peep inside the windows. But I opened this up because I wanted some light coming in. It's very extreme, but I overpowered it with my flash. So let's just go uh, save to Photoshop. I mean, save to Lightroom. And one thing I've got to do here is when I fix the alignment, you'll see this border around it. So I got a crop inside the border. There we go. Not perfect, but I'll take it. Fast and easy. Okay, let's go to this bedroom. Smaller bedroom, I could certainly use this, but I won't. Okay, I'm just gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. Drop the shadow down a little bit, and good, okay. Let's go here, give it a one star, highlight both, bring it into Photoshop. Okay, let me do the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I'll take eleven seconds. You know, again, it used to be twenty seconds 
a minute. Oh my gosh, it was just terrible. And I know a lot of you out there are taking longer than 12 seconds to open your images up, which can really be a deterrent to bring them in there in the first place. Okay, now I don't like the color that I got from the ambient there. So one thing I'm going to try, and it may not work, give me a bad color to here. But what I'm going to do is let's see if I, now going up here, not normal mode, let's see luminosity. Look right here when we switch it to luminosity. Ah, I still don't like it. I like it a little better, but what I'm going to do is hit X, turn it to black, and I'm going to erase most of it. Okay, there we go. I'm going to bring a little more back here. There we go. And paint that back in just a little bit. Okay, good. All righty. So now we're moving on. Um, I'm going to skip a few shots because... Okay, let's see now. I've got this as three. Actually, let me do this shot. Okay. Let's go to the ambient. And here's the ambient, and it doesn't look bad at all. I'm going to get the ambient with the full bump. Let's just get the yellow out and take it back. There we go. That's a little better. So I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to use this flash shot. So now, ISO 320, 1 80th of a second to get the window view in the handle. Not a great window view, but you know what? I am satisfied with it. Got a little window view out here. So I'm exposing for the windows. Okay, now i got to light everything else. So I put a 200 camera left and a 360 camera right. And all I did was put it at power, probably half power each or quarter power each. And uh, that's all we needed to do. Okay, let's go here, edit in. And I could have closed these shades. I'm going to show you at the workshop how we could close these shades and we would eliminate that shine from the floor. But on this MLS shot, I just wanted to get in and get out. It still took me over an hour and a half to shoot this house. It's a new agent. I wanted to do a really bang up job. Okay, here we go. Let's just um, align them really quickly. And you'll see aligning doesn't take much time. Okay, so I'm gonna make a mask. There we go. Bring it down here. Okay. Nope. And the good thing is, is you paint it in, and if you don't like it, you can go back at the end and erase it. You, know, you don't have to use your eraser tool. As always, you can just hit X, and it will turn from white. Here's white to black, X, or you can touch it. And I'm just going to bring back the flash in this table. It's a little bit hazy with uh, too much ambient coming in. Okay. So everything looks good. Bring that back. Now I'm going to skip to the um, dining nook. Okay. Actually, let's just skip to the kitchen. Because, oh, I'll do a long shot. This is good because it'll show you what I was dealing with. Okay, here's the ambient shot. And a lot of you people have a lot of problems with long rooms. I was able to hide a flashback here. But let's see our... our um, ambient shots here. Okay, I did two ambient shots. One for back here, and I'm going to do get the yellow out, and then I'm going to massage this shot. I'm going to bring down the exposure. All I'm looking is in back here. This is what that shot is for only. But the important thing was I was able to identify that when I was setting up the shot. So that's what I'm going to need from you guys, is to learn how to know what you need to get. Okay? So I'm going to put a one star there. The next ambient is more for in here. So I'm actually going to raise up my exposure here. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, ambient out again. And many people say, why not just don't put ambient? Why don't you do the ambient out uh, for all the ambient shots? It's just easier to do it my way. Okay, and then the last shot is flash. This is 125th, so I'm exposing for the window. And it is 300 IS, 320 ISO. So let's just bring this down a little bit in exposure. So basically, we're making our shots what we need uh, for every for the parts that we need it. 
we massage each individual image for the whole. And the more you do it, the more you will get comfortable with it and the more you will understand as you're shooting. And it'll, be, it'll it's going to take longer at the beginning, but don't worry about it. You're really going to, you know, get through it quickly. And um, then uh, when you do it, you get home and it really cuts the editing time down. Okay, so now I've got three layers in here. And I'm just going to highlight all three layers. Okay, and I'm going to go and align layers. And I know that the top one is my ambient shot there. And that is the, um, boy, you know what? I don't think I even need my second ambient shot. Oh, you know what? I, what did I do here? Ah, never mind. I'm just going to use these two. Okay. So let me highlight that. I'm going to make a mask. And let's just go ahead and start getting rid of, put it in white for paint. There we go. A little bit of light back in there. A little bit of, get rid of that flash reflection over there. A little bit in there. Okay. And I move these two chairs. I'm going to do a lot of showing you how to move furniture. Uh, you don't have to move furniture. A lot of people don't. I happen to move it per camera. So it's important to me. And what I'm going to do now is just get rid of this uh, shine here from my flash reflection. Mask in the ambient there. Not perfect, but uh, it's okay. And let me bring out, I'm going to hit X and erase here. And as always, do as little or as much as you want. Okay. I uh, say you just got to make your day. Okay. This one's not great. It's looking a little flashy, but it is, it is good for what it is. There we go. That's not bad. Maybe I'll bring it down just a teeny little bit. There we go. Good time for me to talk to you all about calibrating your monitors. It's really important that you calibrate your monitors. Okay, let's go here. This is an interesting concept because we got a lot of color issues here. And you probably are all shooting with these issues. So let me see now. Which ambient shot am I going to take? Nope. Nope. Let's go here. You know, I think I'll use this one. Now I'm going to go right for the ambient out, ambient yellow out. And that brings it much more in line. And now I'm going to also go for something neutral. I'm going to go for a baseboard, a white baseboard. This is my Lightroom eyedropper tool. Go down here and just go bam. Now, it made it a little bit too purpley, so I'm going to take away the blue and now bring it up here and make take away a little of the, of the coolness and bring a little warmth. But I'm going to compare it to my flash shot. So here's the flash shot. And I'm going to actually bring down the exposure here and take a little bit of the yellow orange out. Let me do that right there. Good. Okay. And a little blue out. Now I want to make sure that this shot looks good, the flash shot, but I need to use the ambient for in here and this room. I think I've got, I thought I had a flash back in there. I guess I didn't. So let's see right here. Um, this is the, nope, this is the ambient shot I'm going to use. And I, I've got enough exposure here. I think I'll be fine. So I'm going to use this, this um, ambient shot and this flash shot. Sometimes that's the longest period of your image is trying to decide which image you want to use. And once you get used to examining the images and know what to look for, it will happen. It will fix very, very quickly. So let's just bring this in now. And I'm going to uh, align my layers. Okay, let's just do this real quick. Okay, so I'm going to main thing do is come in here and bring up, I'm going to make it white for paint. I could have put a light in this little hallway, but it was really tough. 
there's just no room there we go that's okay I'm fine with that there we go now a little bit of light in there that's from the ambient and I'm gonna open this up and just do a little bit of ambient under here good okay again this is pretty fast down and dirty actually look at that I had a glare from a flash over here I have a flash over here so what I'm gonna do is paint in the ambient and it got rid of that flash shine the best way to get rid of quickly is to just use ambient on wooden cabinets I'll show you that and that'll really show you and that, that'll really help you out um, once you learn how to deal with flash reflections glare things like that okay now I'm gonna do one uh, my final bump there we go a little more contrast in it bring down the exposure just a teeny little bit there we go awesome okay and um, let's go there now I'm going to do one shot here this was a hallway shot I wanted to emphasize they had this um, I don't know, it's like a butler's pantry or something but it's a feature there so here is my flash exposure and um, I'm going to take out a little bit of the yellow actually I'm going to use my eyedropper tool I'm going to put it on white over here yeah that's a little better but I've got flash here issues I need exposure here issues so I got a lot of issues I'm going to take this as it is here and I'm going to go put a one by it now let's look at the ambient and see what do we need I actually tried using a flash in here but it, it didn't look right so I think I can get by with just the ambient and if I can't I've always got that flash layer that will help me one thing I can do here is the left side needs a little more exposure I can use my gradient tool for exposure and just bring that up there and if you're not familiar with that um, it is called the gradient tool here and I can change many aspects of the gradient tool but it's pretty simple I could have also come in here with my paintbrush give a little exposure down here about uh, eh, 78 percent and just add a little bit of exposure here okay so there we go okay this is the ambient shot put a one star there and the flash shot and let me go back to the flash shot again Ooh, you know what I don't like that at all the white balance okay let's take out a little more of the yellow or take out some of the yellow okay now let's take these two send them to Photoshop as layers now I guess it shows you it's just the, the biggest thing you got to do is be able to know how to adjust your ambient shot or your flash shot too to match the areas that you need to use them for so it's all about the concept of identifying what we plan on using and we'll sit down and talk a lot on these workshops about this so I'm going to align the layers okay and I'm now going to highlight the top image which is the ambient make the mask and first I'm just gonna paint back there and there so I've still got some of the crispness of the flash shot and now watch what I'm doing in here not great you know what it would look better with a flash in there but the problem is it was so hard for me I tried actually I spent about five minutes trying to balance um, this door right here I tried to open the door to the right you can't see it balance the light up there there's nowhere to hide it on the left so you know what it really uh, it, it I made my day because I was able to use an ambient shot to do the heavy lifting okay and though this is not perfect this also ambient shot can help you with under cabinets I'm a little low on the um, composition here but I'm okay with it okay let's go to the next one and what are we gonna do to this I'm gonna add my um, final bump to this I think there we go I'm gonna crop out this left wall I don't like that but I want to see that it flows over into the dining room that's information I want to give the uh, potential buyer okay so I'm putting a three star next to that oh we're just gonna do um, oh here are the 
owner of the house wanted a a um, detail shot of the electric plug for you know it's a big selling point so you want to make sure that your clients know uh, give them the option the opportunity to go hey if there's anything you specifically want shot and she goes oh yeah my husband wants this this is just an ambient shot an eighth of a second 320 ISO I could clean it up but I'm not gonna do that it's just an information shot not a beauty shot and then I did a couple of um, a couple of I did a fake tilt shift here because I didn't want to go get my tilt shift lens and I've got that there I'm gonna put a one next to it and then the orange I'm going to uh, bring down the saturation a little bit in here and raise up the exposure a little bit and you know what I need it closer to this orange so what am I gonna do I'm going to try and see if I can fix it with I'm gonna go on a white switch plate nope um, let me see if I can yeah let's try you know what we'll do it in luminosity mode and it may not pick up any of the color uh, and a lot of you people that follow me know I don't do the luminosity mode much I do it more in the nat in the natural natural normal mode over here but I find that luminosity and let's see how it works here by the way I'm doing a fake tilt shift so I am raised the camera up where I want it and I pointed it down and I'm going to fix it in post okay let's just do this um, aligning of layers and as you guys can see it's pretty fast to align layers you can actually do it you know you could do it uh, many many ways but I just chose this way okay so here's the ambient shot and I'm gonna make a layer mask and let's just try it in normal or oh, I mean luminosity okay so let's get rid of this uh, flash now that's maybe where I'll have problems see that's the problem right there if you've got a bright light like that and you use luminosity it tends to not really bring in the right colors so I'm gonna go back up to normal much better okay so let's just go overall and the color will kind of be somewhere in between the two uh, for a designer shoot a uh, an architectural shoot colors are extremely important because these people built these they're specifically for the colors and for the details but for real estate I'm, I'm done with this image it's pretty good so I'm going to show you how I can fix the tilt shift um, but if for real estate it is fine as long as you're in the ballpark but using lights is going to really help you uh, as opposed to doing HDR so I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to do this manually I'm going to take the vertical transformation there we go and just eyeball it you know what I don't want to do that I'm going to go auto let's see auto auto ah auto worked pretty good yeah perfect uh, I might have a little distortion issue going on yeah let me see now tighten this up a little bit and I just thought again a couple of extra shots remember people if you want to you know increase your numbers let's say you're shooting a thousand square foot house and you're having trouble getting 25 images you can do double images you could do the detail shots like this I normally wouldn't do a detail shot of a, a plain oven like this but what the heck I had a new agent today wanted to make her very happy so okay now let's go I'm gonna leave this here uh, you don't need to see any more of this so let's just go into the exterior shots I'm just showing right here is very important this is a RV parking so you always want to make sure that the RV parking is well known because people will absolutely sell houses mainly because I mean they might think the house is okay but they love the RV parking so I'm gonna go three there I'm okay with that I've added the full bump to all these images the only thing here it's a little bit blue so I'm gonna add a little bit of whoops Add a little bit of orange warmth okay there we go turned out to be a beautiful day in California as you can see I was actually trying to wait for the um, for the clouds to be be um, go under I mean uh, for the Sun to go under a cloud because I found uh, that it was a little bright for uh, it was a little contrasty so I'm gonna bring down the overall exposure look at my histogram all the way up here so I'm gonna bring it down here about there that looks about good okay three year and here is the uh, shot of the uh, 
of the car, uh, the uh, RV parking. Really nice RV park, man. I'd love one of these. Bring a little of the uh, saturation down. And um, I'm going to bring the blue because it's such a beautiful day. I'm going to bring the blue up. There we go. And the blue luminance down. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze because there we go. And I could have probably moved all this stuff, but I didn't. And it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Just tells your agents they should be ready when you're coming. Okay. So I'm just going to turn this, this one. I'm going to duplicate this because it's uh, similar issues. Okay. I'm going to sync this. Accept the, uh, accept the um, local adjustments I don't want. I don't want to do that gradient filter again. Okay, now let's look at this. Awesome. That's a little warm, so I'm going to bring it down to a little bluer. And I want a little bit of dehaze. A little more be a little bit of dehaze. But you got to know, you could go a little far on uh, too much dehaze. Let me go bring a little bit of green in here. And down a little bit in exposure. Yeah, I think the blue is not looking uh, real good there. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, let's go here. We're all stoked when we get any sun this time of year. And I don't say anybody needs to do as many shots as I do. I just love shooting um, real estate, and I over, I over, I overproduce. So I, uh, again, I don't think you need to do as many as I do. But I'm just giving you an idea of what I do. Okay, let's just bring in the little warmth here. Good. Okay. Another shot here. Yeah. There we go. And I am trying to get the um, trying to get a shot here, but the sun was really, really playing havoc on my uh, on my lens. So, okay. And let's just do the outside now. And there's a perfect example why I'm using my pole. I have the 16 foot pole. Let's go right here. See what this one is. Let me go here. I think I can use this one and there you go. So I don't have the time to shoot at the exact time of day, which would be about four o'clock for here. I'm going to do auto um, upright. Okay. But I think this is fine. Okay. Life has shadows. I think this would be as good as anybody could want. And uh, sure, you could use lights here. You could actually go a little bit of local adjustment in here. Let me uh, raise up my flow. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to that adjustment I just did. A little bit of clarity. And it brings it back. Okay, so here is the... Um, Let me see. I wanted to show you uh, before and after, but that's okay. So I got that shot there. And I just want to show you one more thing before I leave. Um, oh, here's another reason for the pole. I got a really nice angle on the um, for that uh, car park, for the, uh, the uh, RV parking. So what I want to do is go back into my regular adjustment and then go here. And then I can go a little bit of dehaze here. But it is showing you, and then I'm going to straighten out the, uh, the upright, auto. I always try auto first. And you know what? It usually works pretty good. I'm just going to rotate it slightly. And you'll get a lot better at doing this kind of stuff after a while. But I have a good shot here with the 16-foot pole. You would not see the shot in there at all or have any reason to do the shot without a 16-foot pole. So that's telling you something. And the last shot in the sequence I wanted to show, I'm not going to use this shot, but this house is right across the street from a park. So this didn't really work well for me because it's not the good-looking part of the park. But I did go up the street and I did shoot the park from a 16-foot pole. So it's just giving you an add-on, um, you know, put it into the MLS 
that the uh, the people that move in here, if they have kids, they can have a park right across the street. So, and here's another um, shot I did for the uh, outside. And again, these were all done with my Sony A6000. That didn't like good. So let me go back there. Okay, let's go here. Good. Okay. And let's go here and add a little bit of um, a little bit of red, a little warmth, and bring down the exposure just a little bit. Okay. Okay. And there you have it. It was a pretty quick, um, pretty quick edit. I still have some more images to edit, but I didn't want to take all of your time up. Okay, so I hope you get the impression that it is really easy to do once you can identify the pieces you need and you know what to do. It's going to be a little bit tricky when you're just starting out, but I'm hopefully we'll put all the parts together when we meet. So um, do your best work. Keep doing it. Keep um, keep getting better. Shoot faster. Just, just you know what I'm saying. And uh, we do this because we love it. And uh, I am always there. Leave comments on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. I always answer my comments personally within a day or two. I try. Um, check out photographyforrealestate.net, which is a great uh, Larry Lorman's. Uh, he's got the, uh, the uh, blog going on and the PFRE group in uh, Flickr. All these great resources. And I've got a, a couple of Facebook groups and stuff. But the attendees for the workshop, I'm really excited to uh, get you guys together and, and hopefully get a lot of light bulb moments going off. You go, oh, I love it when a student goes, oh my God, I figured it out. Thank you. Should have seen me the first time I got my, my window pull in darkened mode. I was just going, oh my gosh, that's going to save my life. And it did. So anyway, I didn't do any window pulls in this shoot, but it just shows you, you don't need to do it if you have the right skills and you have the right gear and the right amount of lighting power. So this is Rich Baum with Sacramento real estate photographer guy coming down. And, and if anybody has any questions about the workshops, just send me a message, rich at richbaum.com. And I'll answer uh, your emails promptly. I've got the uh, Sacramento workshops coming the 28th and 1st of March, 28th of February to the 1st of March. I've got another one going to be the 21st, 22nd of March. And then I'm going to be doing Seattle coming up in the end of April. So I look forward to seeing all my northern United States people up there in uh, beautiful Seattle in April. I hear it's just gorgeous. So contact me if you need any questions answered. I'm always there to help you out. Thanks a lot. Rich Baum, Sacramento, California. See you later.